In this pod slice summary of the Club Random podcast, Bill Maher and guest Tommy Lee dive into an intimate and charismatic discussion on a broad spectrum of life, career, and personal experiences. Diving right into it, Tommy expresses he would rather choose being a stripper over working a nine-to-five job, setting a candid tone for their conversation. Covering everything from past party days to the present sobriety, Tommy shares his journey embracing sobriety, admitting to previously toasting a year of sobriety by having a drink. A paradoxical celebration that Marr regards as a very rock star response. Marr, while acknowledging the link between creative professions and substance misuse issues, wonders why one would need drugs when life in general offers so much to live for. Stories of past excessive indulgences and countless tales of notoriously hard partying touring days also surfaced during their conversation. Tommy recalls a contest of who could endure the most physical strain without passing out, revealing the chaotic world that was once his day-to-day life. Taking a turn towards more emotional grounds, they touch on the challenges of maintaining relationships when immersed in the whirlwind lifestyle of a rock star. They humorously discuss how Daryl Hall from the duo Hall and Amp Oats admitted it was impossible to stay faithful with the potential distractions that came with fame. Discussing aging, they share experiences of gradually transitioning into a lifestyle most suited to their health and overall well-being. Tommy assures everyone that he still carries the same wild spirit within, drawing parallels to the unchanging nature of the Rolling Stones despite their advancing ages. Their dialogue further finds Tommy revealing that he still weighs the same as he did in high school, crediting, perhaps ironically, his past life of excesses. Shifting gears, Marr brings up Marcel Proust's novel Remembrance of Things Past, explaining its theme of memory and sensory perception. Counteracting Proust's emphasis on smell as a primary trigger for memories, both Marr and Tommy agree that for them, music plays a more potent role in recalling the past. In conclusion, the conversation weaves back to the initial humor about stripping as a plan B, providing a dual sense of continuity and comedic contrast to the emotionally charged and reflective narratives discussed throughout the podcast. The host, Bill Maher, moved the conversation to an amusingly personal topic, revealing that a stripper pole that once graced his studio is currently missing at the time of Tommy Lee's visit. They chuckled over the fact that, given Tommy's association with the Girls, Girls, Girls music video filmed in a strip club, it was cosmic irony that the poll was absent during his visit. The conversation veered towards beliefs in universal coincidence and life itself. Tommy, while not clearly affirming any belief, implies that life and aging serve as his communication mechanism. Tommy then surprised Marr by revealing that, despite his rock star status and allure, he was fundamentally a shy person. This ignited a fun banter about their contrasting approaches toward shyness, confidence, and dealing with dating situations. Joining the levity, Tommy randomly questioned Marr about which beetle he thought was quite literally the biggest. A query that led to a heartening exchange on musicianship, songwriting, and of course, drumming. Tommy believes he was born with a natural inclination towards rhythm, and he related how endless drumming got him into trouble, but eventually also granted him incredible success. Speaking of drumming, Tommy shared a wild fact. He once used a pedometer to measure how much he moved over the course of a two-hour show, discovering he'd covered the equivalent of 12.3 miles. This might explain why he hasn't gained a pound since high school. The pair humorously discussed how a workout based on Tommy's drumming tactics could make a fantastic infomercial. Switching gears to the current state of rock and roll and the controversy around the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, Marr questions the very necessity of such instituting in music. Tommy pointed out that over the years, the Hall of Fame has lost some of its prestigious allure, partly because of who ended up being inducted. But should the moment ever come, he wouldn't mind rejecting the offer, maintaining his rebellious spirit true to the heart of rock and roll. The dismissal of critics and the subjectivity of rankings in music led to more shared laughter. Discussions of historically important songs that didn't seem up to the mark raised questions about the role of critics. Rather than focusing on delivering a helpful guide for the public... Marr argued that some critics indulge in showboating, shifting the spotlight onto themselves. He pointed out that the essence of criticism should serve to guide the audience, not mete out personal opinions. Tommy agreed, implying that unfortunately, critics often lose sight of their real role and often prefer knocking down that which they review. 
They then amusingly discussed various professions and why anyone would choose to become specific specialists, culminating in an amusing reflection on the life choices of proctologists. The conversation somehow meandered and lost its trail, ending up quite humorously off topic, but both agreed to continue the intriguing exchange. Continuing the Club Random Podcast Transcript Analysis. In this part of the conversation, the host delved further into the deep end, discussing wide-ranging topics, from graffiti to promiscuity, from alcohol to drug use. Tommy Lee shares his personal, often extreme experiences with alcohol addiction in open, candid form. His graphic recounting of his drinking habits astonished Marr, especially his revelation that Lee drank up to two gallons of vodka per day. Lee confesses how his destructive choices were on the verge of ending his life prematurely. They discuss the recovery process, emphasizing that Lee's experiences are testament to the body's resilience, highlighting how Lee credits his miraculous recovery to his genetic resilience. The conversation takes on a sober note while addressing addiction and then dives into Lee's early years in his band, when the members recognized that their rampant drug consumption could potentially cost them their lives. Marr then segues into a discussion on the allure of drugs, referencing his own experiences with ecstasy, while Lee acknowledges the huge variety of substances he engaged with during his tumultuous youth. Interestingly, Marr expresses his avid disapproval of tattoos, arguing the presence of such markings, especially on women, could be forfeited. Taking a quick detour into an amusing aspect, Marr presents a hypothetical negotiation to women about keeping their bodily grooming habits in exchange for freedom from tattoos. Lee, on the other hand, casually reveals how he resorted to tattoos to cover up the markings from frequent injections. Laughter ensues, but this disclosure subtly underscores the extent of Lee's past addiction struggles. But it's not all seriousness and reminiscences. Lee expresses heartfelt admiration for Marr's outspoken and unique presence in the entertainment industry, emphasizing how Marr's fearlessness in addressing taboo topics brings him extreme joy. He admires Marr's audacity to say things others wouldn't, a trait he deeply appreciates. This transcript delves into a heartening exchange where the hosts sincerely appreciate and recognize the uniqueness in their respective crafts. Tommy Lee signifies his admiration for Marr's no-hold-barred approach to presenting opinions, aiming for the truth irrespective of public sentiment. He praises Marr's intelligent way of putting forth controversial viewpoints, which Marr reciprocates by appreciating how Lee understands his strive to make a distinct space in the entertainment industry. Marr admits to feeling underappreciated sometimes, as his unique blend of opinionated news and comedy show didn't always garner widespread acclaim or awards. Yet he would happily trade critical acclaim for the audaciousness and honesty in his work approach that Tommy Lee recognizes. Lee's appreciation felt like a long-awaited meaningful recognition for Marr. There's also a humorous exchange about a hypothetical party Marr plans to organize, making a lighthearted joke about bringing in William Shatner if he mentions Tommy Lee's name. As they transition back into deeper conversations, Tommy Lee highlights the paradox between the sensitive, desirable traits their work portrays, especially in music, and their reality. The diffidence between the emotional resonance in their lyrics and their raucous lifestyle becomes a point of discussion. They acknowledge how lyrics hold more significant meaning to women than they do to men, who usually pay more attention to the beat and melody. They express how important the overall music is, as no matter how brilliant the lyrics might be, without the right tune to accompany it, it won't capture their interest. Towards the end, they delve into the concept of cancel culture. They reflect on how their band, Motley Crue, never got canceled. Given they never adhered to societal norms themselves, they find it ironic that no unified, enforceable standards exist for who should be held accountable in cancel culture. Lastly, they share experiences about their drinking habits, discussing how alcohol became a significant part of their lives. The candidness of this segment paints an introspective and honest picture of their pasts. This transcript captures the in-depth conversation between Bill Maher and Tommy Lee concerning religion and personal beliefs. Bill Maher prompts Tommy Lee to discuss how he handled questions about religion from his children, wherein Lee admits that religion was not a significant part of his life or family dialogue. Sharing a humorous anecdote, he recalls a moment when his kids asked about a Chinese basket, a term denoting a sex swing, and how he deflected the question by referring to it as a plant hanger. Conversing on their distinct religious experiences, they also touch upon the denominations of Christianity they were exposed to. 
Having been raised without a strong religious background, they scrutinized the discrepancies within the Gospels in the New Testament. This examination leads them to agree that the varying accounts of religious texts often result in confusion for the believers. Marr then introduces the idea of a sequel to his documentary Religious, so suggesting that wokeness, QAnon, and Trumpism could be treated as the new religions. They then divert their talk into their comfort zones, embracing the ease that age brings and preferring to stay in familiar settings as opposed to embracing the unknown adventures of youth. They compare their upbringing, noting similar middle-class backgrounds and sharing anecdotes about their first homes. They also delve into their transitions to life in California, discussing the cultural differences between the East and West Coasts, especially in regards to the social atmospheres in New York and California. Towards the end, both celebrities express their similar sentiments about visiting New York. They appreciate the city, but agree that they can only handle its intensity for a limited time. In the course of their conversation, they stress that their preference for California is inconsequential, showing respect for other people's love for New York. Throughout this discussion, they maintain a tone of easy camaraderie, offering a peek into their unique perspectives on religion, aging, places, and comfort zones. In this section of the conversation, Mar and Lee dive into a range of topics that unravel their shared views and unique experiences. Lamenting their aging process, Lee and Mar share jovial banter about readjusting their lifestyles as they reach their 60s, agreeing to calm down, avoid harmful habits, and adopt healthier routines. They admit that age has subtly begun demanding their attention and care, effectively curbing their reckless youthful tendencies. The conversation takes an exciting detour as Marr reveals a joke about Lee he has held on to for nearly 26 years, stemming from times when Lee and his former wife Pamela reconciled after a separation. The joke's punchline relates to a NSFW subject harking back to an infamous video of the couple. Throughout the conversation, the duo maintains a playful, humorous tone, managing to not dodge the changing trends and adapting societal norms. Lee fondly recalls his numerous hotel aliases used in the past to maintain privacy, leading to the sharing of several cheeky, pun-laden names that left even his mother bemused. Navigating the digital age, Lee shares his experience of cautioning his kids about sharing too much on social media, indicating the potential dangers of an increasingly connected world. The discussion veers towards woke culture, with both expressing their disregard for super-sensitive, ultra-woke people. As they continue their chat, Mar and Lee candidly open up about their foundational beliefs, with both underlining the significance of truth in their lives. Lee explains the meaning behind his tattoo, an act of his own expression of seeking truth. Mar, complimenting Lee's sentiment, emphasizes his affinity for truth and freedom. Their shared beliefs, coupled with lighthearted humor and sincerity, represent their distinct perspectives while subtly reflecting on broader cultural norms. The discussion carried on in a free-flowing manner as Tommy Lee and Bill Maher discuss their lifestyle habits and personal boundaries within relationships. Both relating to each other's desire for personal space and solitude, they reflected on how they needed their own time before engaging in shared activities, especially with their respective partners. The conversation dances with humor as they express an aversion towards the notion of relationships being viewed as work. They question why anyone would consider this characteristic a selling point in relationships, humorously comparing it to the idea of a complex toaster that brags about its complexity as an advertising strategy. Lee, continuing with the analogy, expressed a preference for a simpler toaster, the pop-up one, emphasizing his preference for simplicity in relationships, while the conversation segues into a discussion about life's natural complexities. Transitioning smoothly from their personal dynamics, the conversation ventured into religious terrain. Marr shared his fascination with religious history, specifically Christianity's evolution. He recommended a film titled From Jesus to Christ, which critically examines the growth and survival of Christianity amid numerous competing religions during its nascent stages. Mar's fascination with religion was met with Lee's genuine intrigue and curiosity, who admitted to his lack of deep interest in the subject because of a personal belief in self-reliance and internal strength rather than seeking external saviors. However, he admits having experienced moments that pulled him towards a higher power, leaving a lingering sense of wonder. Despite these instances, Lee questioned the notion of religion, believing that everything one needs can be found within oneself. 
However, the acknowledgement of these inexplicable moments in his life created a sense of mystery around his own beliefs, manifesting into a thought-provoking dialogue. The conversation then touched upon the concept of life's randomness, as Marr amusingly suggested that Lee had pulled a lucky life. They discussed the privilege reflected in statements like, everything happens for a reason, stating it's more of a luxury for people enjoying varied, interesting lives. In wrapping up, they both show appreciation for the insightful and enjoyable conversation they'd had, suggesting they should have similar chats in the future due to their youthful spirit, ensuring this wasn't a one-off meeting, but rather the beginning of many more. Notably, their discussion underscores their quest for truth, personal freedom and space, and the underlying complexities and nuances of human life. Check out the full podcast by clicking the link in the description below. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe for more content like this. Thank you for listening to this podcast summary episode of The Pod Slice.